Make a hot cuppa and relax. It's Afternoon Karak with Aisha Al Mazmi and Mikhail Atia on Pulse 95. I forgot to wish everybody a happy Leo season yesterday. So happy Leo season to everybody. I hope like everybody's confidence is back because I'm not going to lie, but counter season was not nice to me. I don't think it was nice to a lot of people. We can all agree that it was the star's fault and not our fault. When when is the Scorpio season coming? A Scorpio, I mean, it's around your birthday, Mikhail. So you should know. But I know it's sometime like, it's maybe mid-October till mid-November. Yes, it is um, end of October, all the way till mid-November. That's my Scorpio season. But usually, again, the stereotypes of what a Leo is, is like confidence and people who, you know, it's all about self-love. Boastful, prideful. Exactly. And I hope that everybody's feeling that because, um, again, we can all blame cancer season and then the past couple of weeks um, for any low moods you've been having. It was definitely the stars. Always blame it on the stars and planets, guys, whenever you can, especially when it's in your, not in your hands. Am I right? Well, I do have three siblings that are born under the, the month of cancer. So I'm pretty sure you know how that feels. They're quite emotional, but we love them nonetheless. And we love all our Leos and everybody in the Zodiac sign, especially for obvious reasons, you know. But anyway, welcome to the afternoon cut guys. We've got a wonderful and fun-filled hour ahead, don't we? Yes, uh, the trailer for a Snyder versus Snyder's uh, zombie verse on Netflix, The mm-hmm. Army of Thieves, just came out. I'm surprised it's so soon. I thought exactly. it was gonna. I thought they said they confirmed it was gonna come out. Exactly. But it's coming out this fall, and there's a trailer and all of that. Yes, exactly. That when I watched it, I was like, "You're kidding me, right?" That's Especially, fast. That was super fast, which means that they probably, I mean, definitely have planned this way ahead. I mean, they're probably gonna pump out a movie after the other was within Snyder versus Zombie verse, starting within the next couple of years. If I mean. They did promise us an anime or two, I believe, an animation, at least cartoon or something like that. Possibly, yeah. But we cannot wait to talk about this one. We might go into tiny bit spoiler territory, just a tiny bit. So if you haven't watched Army of the Dead yet, then perhaps um, close your ears for a little bit. Well, well, don't worry. We'll give you guys a spoiler warning. As also, usual. HBO Max is going to continue its uh, digital and physical theatrical releases. Mm-hmm. As of next year, they've confirmed 10 more movies coming to the streaming platform. As well as Jordan Peele, his next movie, uh, movie poster just came up. The title is called Nope. I love that because he got the longest title he gave us was uh, the first movie. Get Out. Get Out. That's it. That's, that's the longest uh, title. And then we got Us, and now it's like, nope. And then the next movie will just be a letter. <laughs> uh, probably. Maybe just leave an exclamation mark or a question mark. And even then, it will be perfect for Jordan Peele. I'm also going to be talking about so many other things. I do have my iced coffee because what? It's another case of the Monday, isn't it? Yeah, you got to you gotta keep get, get the energy up and, uh, up and running. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, guys, if you've uh, been on Google, I know you've seen that Olympic little mini game. Oh my god, yes. Right? yes. I've, been, I've been playing it uh, here and there uh, trying out some of the arcades but you know with any game that's out there there's always the hardcore community that steps in and wants to turn it into a speed run challenge. All of that and so mm-hmm. much more. Guys, don't forget to join in the conversation. We have our live stream up on our Pulse 95 radio YouTube channel as well as our text lines 4215. It's a lot to do. Let's take a bit of a short break and coming up next, that Army of Thieves trailer right here on the Afternoon Cut. Pulse 95. I think both Mikhail and I can easily agree that I, oh yeah, I call it, okay, so it's Army of the Dead. Now we're moving on to Army of Thieves. I'll, I'll go I'll go back to it in a second. But both Mikhail and I can both agree that from Army of the Dead, our favorite character was Ludwig Dieter, who played this, um, who was kind of like this German guy who... German got, uh, locksmith. Or, yes, yeah. German locksmith who got involved with because, well... He really loves um, opening up massive vaults. That's it. That, that was his excitement. And I honestly, I appreciate that and I respect that. And we were so happy when we found out that we're going to get a prequel movie centered on his character. And we just got a glimpse of Army of Thieves, a prequel to Army of the Dead, which is kind of like, would it be a sequel to the previous movie? Dawn of the Dead. 
from Dawn of the Maybe Dead? Maybe it's in the middle somewhere, yeah. See, that's the question. Like, we don't really know whether even Dawn of the Dead counts as a prequel for Army of the Dead in the first place. I haven't watched the movie, so I cannot really say, like, oh, I can place this movie here and there. Or it just can simply be... You know, retcon yeah. could easily be that. But we got our first teaser from Zack Snyder and Netflix, and it's pretty good. Yeah, and uh, I think this is one trailer you can watch, Aisha. Oh, yeah. It's one minute long uh-huh. and uh, doesn't spoil too much. It just gives you enough about the, that there's a, a team of uh, thieves come together and conspiring to crack uh, probably a really, really tough vault of some kind. Mm-hmm. There's, so, I like there's these little scenes where they show you the internal lock just kind of clicking open and whatnot mm-hmm. and with the music and the beat and I'm like okay this is this could be a little bit different uh, in the sense where it does take inspiration from like Ocean 11 for example I was gonna say that I actually don't think it's different I think it's very reminiscent of all those well-known um, heist movies so I love that but it's very interesting where this time we're centered on I mean it is centered on the character who is interested in the vault itself and not what's inside the vault oh my god uh, from looking at the trailer as well uh, there seems to be a roster of characters they didn't spend too much time uh, but it seems like they will go again for what they did with Army of the Dead where mm-hmm. every character has a stick of some kind a trope uh, which either you're gonna love you're gonna hate or you're gonna be very annoyed with but at the same time uh, I think it's gonna be a whole lot of fun oh this, yeah this movie is coming now, surprisingly enough, sometime this fall. Thing is, I really, really love heist movies. One of my favorite movies when I was a kid, I'm not even joking, as a kid, The Italian Job. The Italian Job. That was Are you talking about the classic one or the, the, the remaster? The classic. There was a remaster? There was a remaster. Really? I'm talking about the one with the Mini Coopers. There's a reason why growing up, Mini Coopers were my favorite cars. Even though now I'm very much a big car girl. But back then when I was younger, I was like, Italian Job is my favorite movie. Instead of, you know, Disney or whatever. Loved by Disney and Barbie. Not going to say I didn't love them. But The Italian Job had a specific special place in my heart. Which is why I just... I'm a sucker for heist movies i don't care oceans 11 oceans 12 oceans 8 likewise there's anything with heist i mean even i'm trying to remember the name of them the movie the one the magicians the magician uh, uh, now you see me now you see me i love that movie even though it's it's just it's a mess but i love it <laughs> now you see me one now you see me two if it's on tv i will watch it again for for no reason it's just a lot of fun for me so i cannot wait to watch this and now we'll go a little bit into spoiler territory just a tiny bit because we did speak about the fact that this there might be some sort of um loop happening and i'm not sure if it's just me just being extra or it's a reach but i think the even though okay now even though an army of the dead again this very much could be a reach if you watch army of the dead you can you probably are like i show what on earth are you talking about this does not make sense but you see how the lock itself or the vault it's very similar to the one Dieter is handling mm. in Army of the Thieves. Again, could be a reach. I could be very much wrong because in Army of the Dead, he did. they did kind of get him into it because they were telling him that this is a different one. It's a big vault and whatnot. It's a vault that he's always wanted to crack himself. But it seems like he already did that in this prequel. I don't know. Again, so could be a reach. An alternative timeline? Could be a reach. Again, could easily be a reach oh, and but leaving those, extra. Those theories are still there even Zach went on Twitter to somewhat um, encourage those uh, speculations. He's trying to mess with us most likely, but um, Zach and Deborah Snyder, they're doing a great job in basically hyping people up, even though, in our opinion, like Mikhail and I think that Army of the Dead was eh, was yeah. meh, but I feel I have hopes for this movie. I hope. I think maybe with this uh, you know, world building uh, and, and these upcoming prequels and sequels in the zombie world, uh, it's definitely going to be uh, exciting to watch. This heist movie, Army of Thieves, coming out on Netflix sometime in fall. And don't worry, we're gonna, definitely going to watch it and review mm-hmm. it here on the Afternoon Cutout. Coming up next, uh, HBO Max has announced that they will be releasing over 10 films straight to streaming starting uh, as of next year. Continuing that digital on demand uh, since the beginning of the year. So stay tuned for that and so much more. 
Pulse 95. Earlier this year, uh, actually, we're talking December 2020, uh, Warner Bros. just out of nowhere announced that all future films of 2021 will have a hybrid release uh, coming uh, d- directly to HBO Max as well as theatrical releases. This in some way got some backlash, not only from uh, uh, consumers, but even their own production houses. I think Legendary, uh, this is a production behind uh, uh, Dune. They mm-hmm. were expressing that this is not good for them. It's not viable because they were spending so much money on production. And uh, there was this like financial uncertainty with having a movie release on digital as well as theatrical and uh you know it's still a question it's still a debate that's happening but that's not stopping warner bros from still announcing once again that 2022 will be releasing 10 new films directly to hbo max it's very interesting because just to add on what mikhail said earlier is that not only the production houses but rather even the actors and actresses themselves had to pull out their representatives and go to hbo max slash warner brothers to tell them what is going on because apparently warner brothers did not really give a heads up to those actors and actresses which actually brought broke some clauses in their contracts so I'm, we're not sure what happened about them and directors were very very, very angry and some of them were going as far as wanting to boycott Warner Brothers and lately actually owners of theaters have been saying that the reason why there is a very low box office is because of HBO Max's um, new streaming service model and apparently they actually said that Warner Brothers will never go back to the old way of just theatrical release in fact they're gonna have this hybrid release thing where movies or not all of them of course a lot of their movies are going to come out simultaneously on HBO Max and also theatrically now this goes to the question is it a good idea or a bad idea I understand fully where the production houses, directors, and even um, actors and actresses and theater owners are coming from. But as a person, I find that, you know, that might be useful, even though I'm getting more and more comfortable to go back to cinemas. Again, a lot of countries do not have their cinemas open. So this is always an, a way for them to basically avoid piracy in a way. Obviously, it also enhances piracy, you know, wink, yeah, wink. it's, uh, it's a but weird also, win-win scenario. Exactly. But at the same time, it's still good for people who cannot or do not have access to theaters, even though HBO Max has not been released across the entire world or internationally. Even though a while back we did report on a rumor we came across on Twitter that claims that HBO Max will be coming to the Middle East perhaps by the end of this year. Yeah, they might even expand it down to uh, South America, parts of Europe. And I think this is one of the reasons why they're really focused on having uh, films released directly to HBO Max because it's not about a blockbuster revenue. And now it's about getting those subscribers. And uh, if they're going to go global, they're going to be competing with the likes of Amazon Prime and Netflix. And soon enough in the future, Disney+. Plus. Oh, yeah, because if the reason why Netflix has such a good hold on the market internationally is because they are they are everywhere they're basically across the entire world and when they have the Netflix um, in-house production everybody gets simultaneous release at the same day and they get to watch it meanwhile Disney is slowly inching towards that but is struggling same goes for Amazon Prime because at Prime TV has been there for a very long time but not a lot of people know about it it's sort of hidden and sometimes you might not get the same, um, you know, movies, TV shows, and, you know, et cetera, that are available in the U.S. versus globally. So yeah. it's all about that race of reaching everybody. That distinctive value. That's exactly. what every streaming platform is competing for. Mm-hmm. And HBO needs to have that distinctive value as well. Oh, very much. They have, a, you know, wide array of movies and TV shows under their belt. They just need to release globally, what I, which I think they're going to do successfully before Disney Plus. It's just a prediction for me. I think they're going to do it by the end of the year slowly, bit by bit. They're going to hit a lot of markets way before Disney Plus because Disney Plus is still kind of slow. I mean, yes, in the Middle East, we do have its partnership with OSN, but not a lot of people are aware of OSN streaming. It's still very new to them. I found out about it by coincidence. And like you just think about the other people who have no idea it exists in the, you know, 
at this time right now. I mean, I'm still thankful for it, and it's very useful. But also in comparison to Netflix, for example, if, again, like I said, Netflix will have simultaneous release across all of the territories. Meanwhile, when I came to watch any of the Disney Plus shows, especially The Mandalorian, Loki, WandaVision, and Captain and Captain Captain Falcon, Falcon oh and my, the Winter Soldier, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, technically Captain America. Yeah, spoilers. I had to <laughs> wait six, seven hours for it to come out for me to watch it so there's six seven hour gap where i have to avoid spoilers on the internet before i get to watch it which makes a here. huge because we're so conditioned to the mm-hmm. instant gratification of, of entertainment these days mm-hmm. but yeah hbo max uh, still going uh, full digital on demand and uh hopefully we'll see more of uh, of, of the platform coming to the middle east and, and what's interesting is that they did not really announce what those 10 movies are so they could be anything yeah maybe. i think i think they'll keep with the wait until the sometime later this year because they're they're on a really great momentum they've mm-hmm. they've promoted stuff like the matrix dune uh some other goodness big- dune dune is hilarious <laughs> because they keep pushing it and then every month actually every two weeks we get new poster from dune new teaser from dune but the hype new is real poster. <laughs> the hype is really real but we're getting tired with the new posters from dune just just give us the movie i can only see so many scenes of zendaya i'm sorry <laughs> i love zendaya as well i love with Timothy Chalamet, but goodness, and Oscar Isaac, etc., etc. Great uh, cast, but give us a movie already. Now we move on to an interesting story about Tom Hanks, where he talks about the movie, or at least the character that physically hurt him to play. Oh my God! And it's not what you expect. Coming right up next, right here on the afternoon, Karak. Not in the news. Not in the news. Weirdness that happened today. 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 True story. Everyone has watched at least like three, four, five Tom Hanks movies. I mean, he's he's everywhere and has been everywhere. He's part of our childhood and part of our adulthood. You know, teenager, teenagerhood. Is that a word? Teenage. Yeah. Teenagehood. No. Teen years. Teen years, but I like teenagehood, so if it's not a word, it is a word right now. But my point is, he has a whole wide array of roles that he's played. And he's like, I, I like to think of him as the class act of Hollywood. Oh yeah, definitely. And lately, he actually revealed the character that physically hurts him to play. And you might think, oh, it's probably his character in Castaway because, you know, he probably had to starve a little bit for it. Yes, because... Throw out a beard. Exactly. I'm not sure if pulling out that, that tooth was a real thing or not. I don't think it is. And apparently, actually, he got diabetes. He got, you know, uh, diabetes uh, too because, according to him, because of the fact that his weight fluctuated across all his movie roles. But weirdly enough, according to him, the hardest role he had to play that physically hurt him was Woody from Toy Story. What? Exactly. Physically, right? Physically hurt him. Woody from Toy Story. And he says, I have never gone into a recording studio for Woody without wishing it was already over (laughs) because he is clenched. He is a clenched person. Everything he's going through is a crisis of this moment. Mm, You know, I, I think as viewers, we don't realize that. But, uh, you know, voice actors have to put so much effort into oh, yeah, definitely. embodying a, a character. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, Woody, yeah, he sounds very up there. Like uh, He's panicking and he probably, you know, had to induce that panic in the recording studio. So I do not blame him. And I, I understand what he means. Absolutely. Oh, my God. He, he says that I have driven home after four to five hour, six hour recording sessions and my diaphragm, it would hurt so much. Poor Tom Hanks. Thank suffering you. for the art, as Suffering for the art. Imagine how many movies. We've got four movies. Yeah. And probably... And there's probably another one coming out. <laughs> most likely. And there are probably even some other, you know, maybe promos or other stuff we had to record as Woody. So, thank you so much for the service. Again, being part of our childhood, yes. teenage years, and adulthood as this beautiful, amazing character re- from Pixar. It, re- it reminds me, actually, there was a story my friend told me. He's a huge Dragon Ball fan. Mm-hmm. He told me the voice actor for the American dub, uh, he's known for doing the really good screams for Goku. Mm. And there was one movie where Goku is screaming for a minute straight. Oh my god. And he was doing it in the booth and he literally fainted as he was screaming for that long. Like, so I... I can actually understand the suffering it takes. Oh, my God. I mean, we <laughs> probably both do, especially like I do the news. And if I if I speak for like 
20 seconds I'm like <gasps> need to take a break like, where's my water I need a break I need to break a little bit so you know shout out to them voice actors and actresses across the entire world you guys are amazing like you're a force and nobody really re- realizes that same goes for voice actors and actresses who do all kinds of voiceover work not only in movies and tv shows but also across everything in the entire world whether it's advertisement those psas etc etc you guys thank you are amazing thank you for suffering for our entertainment exactly (laughs) coming up next we're going to be talking about some other stuff such as jordan peele's next movie nope coming up next right here on the afternoon cut this is pulse 95 I think it was around Saturday. Well, it was Sunday morning because it was 3 a.m. So Saturday, Sunday. I was just like looking up some stories for the show. And then obviously I went on Google to look up uh, one of the articles. And then I came across the Google Doodle. I knew there was going to be a game. And I've seen pictures and I've seen the animation and the videos and everything. But what I did not expect that I will spend the next hour ignoring the running order for the show and playing this game because of how immersive and fun it is. Honestly, uh, I I won't judge you because I was doing the same thing. Question, Um, what team? Team, I was the team, uh, Team Hawk. No, it wasn't Team Hawk, it was a team... uh, Which color? Red. The red one? Yeah, the crow. I went with yellow. Oh, okay. Because I wanted to be with the kitsune. I think it was a kitsune, was it? I believe. But basically the trickster, because he looked really cool. I really wanted to be on his team. I just like red. That, that's why. <laughs> valid, valid. I was like torn between uh, the two teams, but I was like, you know what? You love the tricksters, go for the tricksters. And that is a team that I picked because the browser game basically is reminiscent of the Tokyo Olympics, where you choose a uh, one of the four teams and then you kind of embark like similar to how um in pokemon go where even though you're playing individually at the same time you're part of a community that um is kind of competing the leaderboards in across several games that would be reminiscent of the actual olympic games and also with a lot of um, video game references and also Japanese folklore references such as the Oni, Kappa, and just the just the look itself of the game that is like 25-bit uh, kind of game. Yeah, it's like a JRPG uh, top-down uh, experience. Mm-hmm. And um, what I really like about it is that it has all sorts of like sports, arcade, mini games you can play. Anything from running uh, to rugby, table tennis. Uh, I love rugby. It was a lot of fun. It was frustrating, yeah. but it was a lot of fun. For me, I love the climbing. Uh, I hated it. <laughs> How did I manage to get to the top? I have no idea. It was pure luck. And then when I found out there there was another mountain top, I was like, goodness, no, come back down. I don't care. I got the trophy. I'm going to somewhere else, honestly. And what I like about it as well is that it wasn't only about the games because, like you said, it was reminiscent of a JRPG. So there were also some elements of the whole going on quests as well, fulfilling those quests. And they're very simple, but they're a lot of fun and immersive. Yeah, uh, like you said, you can you can spend over an hour plus playing this. But there's always those determined gamers who want to speed run the game. And that's basically what's going on right now. There is a whole leaderboard of people racing to finish the mini uh, the mini mini game sport arcades as fast as possible and it's up on reddit it's up on the, i think the speed run forums as well please tell us the the time it took that person for the climbing for the uh, 11 uh, seconds and i'm seeing it like he's so smooth and incalculable wait is it the climbing or is it the entire game not the entire game i think it's just a sport every sport mini game oh goodness yeah. i mean just the climbing itself took me like like what, like 40 seconds or an entire minute? Because you have to time the jump and be very you careful. You know what? Don't. Just Don't be random. It. That's how yeah. it worked with me. When I was really meticulous, it did not work out. But when I started doing randomly, I reached the top very easily. And uh, But the only one, the rugby one, is the one that um, required being meticulous, which is why how on earth did they manage to finish the games in 11 seconds? It's beyond me, but it's a lot of fun. You guys should check it out if you can. You know, I think if if you're ever on Google, you're definitely going to see it. Uh, what we're what we're actually just telling you guys is check it out, play it, and uh, you might find a little fun in it. You know. And also, team what? Yellow team, red team, blue team, green red team. team. You know, just team yellow as usual. The tricksters <laughs> and. 
a lot of fun. Check it out. And I love also they were talking about some also Japanese mythology with uh, the story of the peach child as well. Love that. Just small things here and there. And that also which makes, you know, the entire Tokyo Olympics 2020 games just a lot more immersive simply because they were touching a base upon um, lots of uh, Japanese folklore and stories. It makes it a lot more fun. Check out the game and tell us. Which team are you on for 215? It is a lot or do. And we move on to some fun, a little bit more around East Asia as well in the Philippines because apparently there was one place where trying to, in an attempt to make the vaccination drive a lot more fun, they turn it into a graduation. How? We're going to be talking about it coming right up next, right here on the Afternoon Karak. Pulse 95. It's almost 5 p.m. That was Afternoon Karak. For dessert, Aisha and Mikhail suggest... If you miss out on any of our discussion, you know what to do. Head on over wherever you listen to podcasts. And that could be Spotify and Rami, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and search up the Afternoon Karak or this Afternoon Karak, and you will find all our podcasts up there uploaded. And this show, I mean, this episode is also going to be uploaded a little bit later. So you guys, if you missed out on anything, you know where to head on to. And if you want to see our faces as we go through a whole wide array of emotions, like good ones, bad ones, ups and downs, you can always check out our YouTube channel, Pulse95 Radio. Also uploaded a little bit after the show. Subscribe, like, and comment. And we're going to wrap up the hour, as usual, with Aisha and Mikhail suggest with a suggestion from Mikhail. Okay, so this one is a suggestion, uh, I think, uh, when you, if, to those who have like those close-knit circle of friends. Uh, one way of showing love, and uh, one thing I always love doing every once in a while, is to write a paragraph Uh, about what I like about some of my friends. And Mm. we've actually put it in our WhatsApp group, and I think we've been doing it at least once a year because I've been looking back at some old uh, chat histories, and I forgot that I wrote some of these myself and even the ones that my friends sent me, but they're so endearing, and you get to learn more about what your friend loves about you and what you love about them. It's very cute. I'm loving. I love that. It's, it's 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 such a... I would say, um, uh, what, what's that word? But it's like a, a building process, you could say. It's, if anything, it's like a bonding experience that you guys can have with your friends. And I definitely recommend it. Now, here's the thing. I feel like in general, and I spoke about this before, that sometimes, even especially in media or around the world, sometimes platonic friendships or platonic, platonic relationships are not highlighted as much as possible. Again, especially when it comes to the media. And what I've learned also that sometimes due to toxic masculinity, sometimes men and boys are not encouraged to show affection. So come on, break that stereotype and tell your bros how much you love them. You too as well, girls. Go ahead and tell your girls, everybody, how much you love them. Well, this lovely, lovely suggestion from Mikhail. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. And I'm pretty sure all our listeners appreciate it. It is incredibly sweet especially as everybody is going through something so why not give them a little surprise and have this lovely engaging activity with your loved ones and with that we wrap up the afternoon karak and head on over if you pass on the baton to big hat and anna schofield anna i'm really sorry if you heard me Talk about the fact that I'm drinking iced coffee throughout the show because <laughs> we're not supposed to drink coffee while we're doing those kind of things. But a little taboo in the industry. Yes, but come on, Anna. It's uh, kind of like case the of the Mondays, case right? Case of the coffee Mondays. Case of the Mondays. And with that, we end our hour and we had on over five to eight. Yellow home only here on Pulse 95. 95. If you liked this episode of Afternoon Karak, drop a like and subscribe. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories.